Hi guys, this is Wirehead King, and today I'm giving you part three of uh, my grass creation tutorial series. In part one, we made uh, the grass, and in part two, we made these little, um, uh, these sort of funny looking things here, and the flowers. But now we're in part three, and we're giving the scene exactly what it needs, which is a good bit of compositing. So, let's go into the compositor and load up our render results. Um, okay, so we're going to take use nodes and backdrop. And then if we um, if we press shift space, uh, we can then enter, um, you know, full screen. I think control down arrow and control up arrow do that as well. I prefer shift space. Um, but, you know, so we have our input, our output, which is a compositor. And we're going to press shift A, output viewer and now uh, that backdrop changes from a little uh, black space into the um, well our renderer result so um, yeah so the first thing I'm going to want to add is depth of field now in part two I showed you how to prepare for depth of field right at the end by changing the the focal point in the scene you should have done that if you're following this tutorial series but anyway if you don't you should probably know already how to prepare for that so we're going to go to filter defocus and uh, if we now put in our image into the image input here and our Z into the Z input there uh, untick preview and tick use Z buffer if we now put this into the viewer uh, we'll see nothing change uh, but if we decrease the f stop song about 20 that's quite strong depth of field uh, you can see um, the background and some of the foregrounds being blurred out as well. Well, being blurred out now. That actually looks quite nice. Um, in my example scene that I made a few hours ago, um, I ended up using about 60 and it came up with the same result. Uh, but I'm still going to just increase that to about 25. And the lower you make this, so if I just uh, bring this down to so 4, um, the more blurry everything gets. So like that, that's ridiculous ridiculous amounts of depth of field uh, which is why I'm sticking with about 25 and, oh and the higher you make it of course the less blurry it gets okay so now I'm also going to add uh, some atmospheric fall off now usually that doesn't work well with scenes that only really extend out for about 10 meters um, but I actually um, I think it works quite well um, in this scene so I'm going to add it. So the way we do this is we add a mix node and we put our image into the mix node like that and um, we don't put anything in the layer under this so everything looks a bit weird now so let's change it to screen uh, everything still looks just like a big white blob but now this is where the fun comes in if I just make another viewer node so I can see this if we go to vector map value uh, we can then put the Z amount into there, and then uh, if we just put that in the thing here, uh, everything still looks white. If we just tick use minimum and use maximum, uh, that will just help. And if we now begin to decrease the offset, you can see um, it's basically um, making these funny patterns based on our scene. And if we decrease the size to something like point zero zero five, uh, it becomes a lot softer. So basically, I'm going to bring this up to about uh, this part of the scene so where the blackness is just at the very bottom here and if we decrease the use maximum um, to a good extent uh, to about 0 0.05 um, you know basically making a very bland grey scene but if we put this into the factor of the screen if we look through the viewer now you can see our grass is back and let's just compare the difference between the defocus on its own and then it mixed with the map value okay so you can see uh, it looks like I sort of desaturated it and made it a bit brighter um, but the more you decrease this use maximum the um, less it kicks in um, so I'm leave that about 0.2 sorry 0 0.02 something very small like that um, just looks nice okay so now I've done that it's just uh, bring that over there. The next thing I want to add is uh, I think it's a lens distortion. That's, I think that's what I use. I just think it looks nice or brings a very small bulge out in the middle of the scene. Um, so I'm going to go to distort lens distortion. 
and I'm going to put the image in and bring that image out like that and nothing's happened so far if we were to change the distort to about 0.05 it's a very small amount you can see that uh, our images are bulging out uh, but the corners are um, sort of getting away um, so if we change this to fit then it repositions it so it works we might just decrease that bit don't go over the top like setting that to one because that just looks awful and some people do that you'll actually be surprised how many renders I've seen that have ridiculous um, lens distortions like that something small like that just gives it a bit of a difference and you know because this looks all very flat and uh, orthographic if you just put that in then it just changes well it it looks like it changes the perspective just a bit it, it just looks a bit nicer okay so um, now we're going to add a vignette so the way we do this uh, in fact what a vignette is I want to explain that it's basically where the corners fade out into a um, a color of your choice so this is in this case it's going to be black that's you know I only really recommend vignettes looking black um, so yeah okay so we're going to go to uh, converter math and then we're going to set this to greater than uh, where is it there it is and then we're going to put the image into here and set this to zero and the way um, that math uh, nodes work in this sense is basically if I to leave that at 0.5 anything that's above um, half brightness basically will show up as white seems to be only the flowers that are doing that if I just set it a bit low to about 0.1 then everything else is doing it and if I set it to 0 then it's all white because 0 is complete blackness if there are tiny bits of black that means that there are well bits of complete blackness in your scene so you're going to want to set it to minus 1 and then um, that will then work. Okay, so enough talking. Let's now duplicate this lens distortion. Uh, uncheck fit, because that would just look terrible. We're going to want to put the value from the um, math into the image, and we want to set the distort all the way up to one. So now we're getting this nice circular uh, effect going from all the edges of our scene so that looks nice and now we're going to go to filter blur gaussian blur and if we tick relative what that would do is um because if we were to just set this uh let's just uncheck this and set this to 10 by 10 that basically means 10 pixels by 10 pixels and if we increase the render size by double then that's just going to make these the equivalent of 5 pixels uh, compared to this but if we tick relative then it stays relative to the render size and it just um, it will keep the same uh, vignette thing throughout the entire thing okay so I'm going to set this to maybe about 30 by 30 uh, that creates quite a nice effect like that and now if we add a mix node here uh, check so change this to multiply put the um, vignette uh, it doesn't matter where the vignette goes for more control over the scene it's best to put it in the bottom like that and if we now take a look at what this looks like you can see that the corners are now fading out into black now if we decrease the uh, factor you can see we're now making the vignette a bit weaker I'd like a sort of a point 0.8, point 0.9 somewhere around there looks good okay so um, now let's add some color correction or color grading to be specific so to do that we're going to go to color uh, color balance and we're just going to put that into there and then out there okay so the way this works is you have your darker colors your sort of mid tones and your highlights of the scene and uh, you can adjust them using these wheels so, uh, for example, I want the highlighted areas to be sort of a greeny yellow colour, so if we sort of put it in there, don't go too far, because otherwise it gets really green and yellow and looks nasty. So that looks nice. And then um, a nice trick is to use complementary colours. So uh, to do that, you're going to want to make the darker colours or the mid-tones a sort of blue colour. And we seem to have quite a dark scene, as we learned from that math node, so maybe adjusting the uh, colour wheel on the left might make a bit of sense okay so there we go we sort of added a bit more um, color to the scene that looks nice and um, yeah I might just increase the intensity of the vignette to about 0.96 as well 
like that and um, it's coming along nicely I might just make it a bit brighter before the vignette so this vignette is huge so I'm just going to group it by selecting all of it and pressing control G uh, that then goes into a group you can press tab and you can then open and close that group I'm going to call this vignette and um, if you just delete the value input there uh, we can put that just nicely in there we can put that call that in and then call this part over here out That's two capital letters there we go um, and so if we just put this as the input of our vignette um, then you know that just keeps things looking all nice uh, just a bit of organization in the compositor is really needed sometimes okay so uh, what was I going to do? that's just going to make it brighter so I'm going to uh, move this over and I'm going to add some RGB curves and basically I'm just going to shift the sort of middle up by about half a, a square in this little grid that makes things a bit brighter but just to add a bit of contrast I'm just going to grab these top bits and sort of drag them out a bit from um, uh, that nice line and then whoops I'm just going to add another one here if it lets me which is not letting me okay and just bring that out a bit from there and that will just add a bit of contrast to the scene that's maybe a bit too much okay there we go so now that's looking very nice colorful and whatever other words you can use to describe it okay so um yeah i'm gonna call that finished you can now render that uh... to 1280 by 720 with a hundred percent um, put the uh, color grading into the compositor to just finish it off uh, so that it displays here and that is our final render so thanks for watching all of this uh, tutorial series I really hope you enjoyed it and I hope you learned tons from it if you like this series please do um, you know give it a thumbs up uh, put a nice comment uh, any questions criticisms or compliments you can put them in the comments Follow me on Twitter if you really want to. Um, also, uh, take a look at the adverts on the side of this video and bef uh, at the beginning of the video if they're there. If they interest you, you know, please do um, click on them to get further information. Because if you do that, it really helps me out. It helps YouTube out, and it could help you out if you, um, you know, get anything you want from that advert. So yeah please do uh, feel free to check out my channel as well um, anyway enough of me talking about what you should do um, we finished this thanks for watching and goodbye